Welcome to the Spirit vs. Science podcast, episode 5. We have David Chong and myself, KY, with you today. David is joining us from the US. David had a spiritual awakening 10 years ago, and since then, has been deep diving into what it means to be human. I'm KY, medical doctor trained in the realms of body, mind, and soul. I'm on a quest to uncover the intersections of science and spirit hoping that my discoveries will contribute to a collective awakening. The discussion today is centered on the Doctor's Deep Dive into Divinity newsletter, Subconscious Mind, Part 1, Plumbing the Depths of the Subconscious. In the podcast, we will talk about examples of how we experience the subconscious mind in daily life, why it matters to us, a side jaunt into emotions, Responding versus reacting. The question, can we be zen all the time? Children and emotions. And lastly, what is the ultimate benefit of understanding the subconscious? The amazing animation of the brain is courtesy of Vectizi. And let's jump right in. It's exactly the same as my... Like- uh, what is the subconscious mind? Among other things, it houses our emotions, long-term memory, beliefs, biases, tendencies, values, muscle, and procedural memory and intuition. Like that is, yeah, yeah. <laughs> like this is, this is spot on. Like um, there's so many people that I talk to when I about the subconscious mind. They always think it's like some magical place that you go into, and all the answers sprout out from this magical place. And I feel like uh, that's like a very common misconception in the spirituality community Mm. is that um, it's it's to not not realize that uh, we are able to comprehend, even though the whole iceberg thing, there is a good portion that we can comprehend about our subconscious and um, try to actively work with through NLP or energy work or, um, you know, but, but first understanding that the subconscious is deeply rooted in our emotional systems, how we act, our habits. Yep. Um, and like, like, you were, uh, like you said here, beliefs, intuitions, these are all other things that the subconscious can mm. also cook up, right? Yep. So, so, I, I, so I love your information. That's what I'm saying. <laughs> I love your letters, too. Because that's exactly on point with how I see it, too. Great to know. Um, mm. How I usually for the first introduction to the subconscious mind i would like I, mm-hmm. the usual example i give would be like uh, driving a car you mm-hmm. you get in and then you put on your seat belt the next thing you know you are thinking what's for lunch what am i meeting today what's for work uh mm-hmm. am i going to the gym today and before you know it you're already parking at your office and like uh, you, you do not use your conscious mind at all throughout the process it's mm-hmm. very very yeah. different from the first time you learn how to drive it's like oh Rear mirror check, uh, side mirror check, mm-hmm. yeah, ignition yeah. on, hand brake off, like so many parts mm-hmm. you you need to consciously do. Subsequently, more yeah. and more gets relegated to the subconscious mind, and then just takes over. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Right, 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 exactly. I love the car example because there's so many times where I like I'm going past a traffic light and I have no idea whether it was red or green. It's like, oh shit, <laughs> you know what I mean? It's like, but you're just like subconsciously just driving and you just know, recognize like, oh, it's go time. You don't even think about like what just happened, you know? Mm. Yeah. <clears throat> Has that ever happened to you? Have you ever like driving and then at a uh, light? I would like to think that I'm more cautious. So uh, yeah. <laughs> 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 it doesn't happen often. It doesn't happen a lot. It's just every once in a while, you know. <laughs> yeah. Um, most of the time nowadays is like I I don't own a car now, so I cycle mm-hmm. most of the time. And cycling uh... is another very good example. It's like it's like muscle memory, and you cannot mm-hmm. forget how to cycle. Yeah, you right. cannot yeah. forget it. Although you like, oh, I've not cycled for ten years. You hop on it, and maybe after five minutes, oh, all the gears are back now. Yeah. Yep. 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 It's just like it's it's the it's the old proverb. Um, can't forget how to ride a bike. Like 
why would anyone wants to uh, want to know more about the subconscious mind? What's in it for them? How would you like yeah. put it? Uh, it's it's funny because uh, I guess I would introduce it as to like why would anybody get into the mind in the first place, or why would anyone be interested in the conscious or subconscious mind? I think uh, the people that do get into this space, that do get into this field, uh, are fairly self-aware of themselves, and they're very interested in themselves. Um, and once you begin to learn, like, uh, oh, there's there's these thoughts in my head, or if I stay quiet and I speak to myself inside my head, I can understand these words very clearly. My thoughts are, are I can hear my thoughts in my head very out loud, uh, you know, clearly without any word or any sort of like reality, in a sense, right? Um, uh, so I, I guess. Uh, once you begin learning that, you learn like, okay, well, what can I do with this information, right? So what can you do once you understand the, the subconscious mind? Um, and, and that's literally everything that, that personal development and even like business development is uh, works for. It's like, hey, now that we have these understanding of ourselves, how can we use that to uh, either manifest goals that we have or uh, go after things that we want, be, do, have, right? Um, so it's, it's like, how, okay, so not, then because like, oh, how can we use the subconscious mind or the knowledge of the subconscious mind to create positive behavior changes, to create, um, you know, uh, that causes us to create more action within us or like uh, utilize it to create bigger goals and bigger dreams than we possibly imagined before. Um, there's a whole bunch of different things to consider as to why you would ever get into this subconscious mind in the yeah. first place, right? Yeah. yeah. Uh, the, the, I like how you put it, it's like a person who is interested in themselves, but that's not in a narcissistic way, but it's more like awareness, mm -hmm. awareness that mm -hmm. your after a certain level of personal development, you know that your thoughts are not you, and you are separating mm -hmm. your thoughts, and then like, exactly like mm -hmm. you say, now that I know this, how can I utilize this information for uh, my personal improvement? How can I improve mm -hmm. my relationships? Uh, that's one is mm -hmm. like, by knowing why I get triggered by my spouse or my partner or my friend, I know mm -hmm. and after some like uh, inner work, you understand and then you change your belief or you remove your hot buttons, then the interactions mm -hmm. becomes much better. Or mm -hmm. a person might have a fear of public speaking or fear of being on stage and then it's like a bit being able to conquer that by knowing um knowing certain skills um and then knowing the power of affirmations and ability to take control and do something about it as opposed to like um i'm triggered and now i have to live in this triggered state uh because you're so unconscious of how the inner uh, workings of your body and emotional body works right yeah um so yeah, yeah, yeah. It, exactly what you said um the, it, it brings a lot of self-awareness awareness and then the mm -hmm. ability which you which you gain subsequently to change from reacting to responding mm -hmm. yeah right and, Absolutely. And, and that's the key to why people are successful or people why are they happy or why are they well adjusted is because they mm -hmm. are responding and not reacting yeah. mm -hmm. although i will say um because because we're, we're going to live life uh as naturally as we can right so there are going to be situations where your patience will be tested you're like um if, if you're okay let's say <clears throat> Let's say your liver, right? Your liver, if it's in a negative state or like a negatively charged energy, uh, it can produce a lot of anger or like, when you get angry, that energy gets stored in your liver, if that, if that makes sense, right? Oh yeah, if that, if that gets stimulated, let's say somebody's irritating you, let's say you're like, you're going, you're outside, you're like uh, having dinner and then somebody in that restaurant is annoying the crap out of you and you're just feeling like pissed off. You're just like, man, what the hell? This guy's like ruining our dinner, whatever, right? And, and you, you're feeling that emotion strongly, right? Uh, if you're feeling that emotion, it's actually better to, which is strange, express the express the emotion at hand, not really to suppress it. Um, and I'm only saying this in, in response to your 
uh, sense of like respond and react because it may seem like that angry outburst is a reaction to how you're feeling. Um, but sometimes those are uh, the most healthiest outlets. It's like we're, the, the goal isn't to be some holy person where you're never mad at, at anyone and you're never hate you. You're never like full of hatred or anything like that. It's more like a uh, balance where it's okay if you're angry as long as you know how to reel yourself back. It's okay to be hateful as long as you know how to reel yourself back. Because if you stay in uh, states of, of massive hate or massive anger, that's when you start becoming destructive. That's when it starts becoming, you know, uh, worse for humanity or, or in terms of your relationships. Um, it can become hostile. Uh, it's just knowing that you can still be angry. You can still, like, there are events in life that are going to piss you off or whatever, and you can respond pissed off, like, ah, da, 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 screaming your head off like a fool, whatever. You just have to know to, when to reel it back. It's like, hey, you're angry, relax. Just, okay, you know? Um, so, uh, in terms of like respond, react, uh, it's still okay to express negative emotions as long as we don't let them overtake us, if that makes sense. Okay. In, in, the, yeah. in the example of the restaurant where you are get, getting mm-hmm. irritated, um, mm-hmm. yeah, I, I, I do agree that it's, it's better to express that instead of if, if you have a very strong emotion, it's not good to hide, uh, to, to suppress it because you, you come out in a different form in a different day when you least expect right. it. But mm-hmm. um, exactly. given the example, if you are met at the uh, at the waitress or the person next to you on the next table, what would you do <laughs> to, to, to express oh. it? Oh, <laughs> uh, interesting. It, honestly, if, if I were to feel those uh, type of emotions, uh, it depends. If I know the person, if the person that's pissing me off is directly across from me and uh, I already know that person and they just said something that just like irked me, uh, then I'm I'm going on. I'm, I'm going to tell them exactly how I feel. <laughs> it's like, look, like I, I have like a flashback of something that happened before at work, where a coworker said had a snarky comment. He had a like a very like it was very professional but very malicious. You know what I mean? He's like, oh, keep it corporate official, but it was very it was still a very malicious statement, right? And uh, it pissed me off. It was like the energy that he sent me came into my body, stored it, and I was like, all right. <laughs> I felt it, and I I sat there for like 10 seconds just thinking about this, like, don't blow up, don't blow up. And I was like, look, you motherfucker. <laughs> and it started like uh, uh, going off. Uh, and then obviously he returned he returned the, the anger, the energy that I was giving to him. But I, that, that's where I cut off the uh, the karmic ties, where it's just like, hey, he gives, he gives me the energy, I'm going to give him the energy back. He gives me the energy back, but I'm going to cut the tie off. Like, I don't feel angry because he's angry at me anymore, if that makes sense. Mm-hmm. Does, yeah. I, I, uh, I, I, I do see that you can go one level beyond that because um, mm-hmm. what we tend to do is like, this person made me angry. Or mm-hmm. this person said there's something, uh, yeah, he is responsible and he is responsible for my feelings. However, mm-hmm. if you go one step further, it's nobody can make you angry unless you allow them yeah. to. Yeah, this is right, the exactly. to go yeah. to. And this is where, you know, people can be zen all the time. I'm not there yet, but knowing mm-hmm. that you have the locus of control of how you feel and mm-hmm. that's how you like, why am I triggered by what he said? Is it because mm-hmm. uh, I have insecurity in, in certain aspects and then uh, he pushed mm-hmm. that hot button and then it's like mm-hmm. going back after the event and then like finding out, oh, how did that happen? Why did that happen? What did I feel? Mm-hmm. How did I learn to feel this way when someone said certain things like that because it's usually a pattern and mm-hmm. then, like, being able to resolve that will like uh, prevent things from that from happening again and then your emotions mm-hmm. i guess the the long-term thing that we're aiming for is like you don't want our emotion extreme anger extreme sadness but we want the the, the mm-hmm. sine wave to be more gentle and that's exactly what we're aiming for. yeah exactly yeah, yeah, yeah. um uh, it, it's funny because like uh in, in in my teachings and like the in terms of like the emotional body and stuff like that, um, <clears throat> it was said that that there 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 is no point in going Zen mode or like being uh, completely non-expressive of your emotion. I guess I guess what you're saying is like, oh, there's nothing this person could ever say to me to make me feel uh, some sort of way, right? Uh, but from my uh, from my experiences is that 
uh, when you're in a room with two or more people, the energy of the room completely changes. It's like, um, if I'm in a room with another person right now, it would be a completely different dynamic. It would be a completely different energy. Um, and it's, it's like a, a dancing of, of energies, yeah. so if, if you will, yep. right? Um, and so it, there are, there are like worlds where people are giving you their energy, whether it's negative or positive, um, whether it's feel good or not. It, it, it's very difficult for us to like sit in front of an angry person that's very personally mad at us and us not feel any sort of way, if that makes sense. Yeah, yeah, yeah. absolutely. Um, I get that. Yeah. So, the moment so is very it's difficult. Like, yeah, most things happen mm-hmm. when you reflect and then, yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. yeah. This brings up the experience of parenting where you know your mm-hmm. let's say my boy is mad at the younger sister for something then you think mm-hmm. that oh don't get mad uh it's okay it'll be fine she's younger she doesn't understand why can't you be the mm-hmm. mature brother and but it doesn't really work because when when a, a, a kid wears the emotions on the sleeve so when they're mad mm-hmm. they're mad but yeah uh, it's exactly. the appropriate channel for that of course we don't want them to like stuff it down so mm-hmm. what we tell them is there are appropriate ways of expressing your unhappiness, but mm-hmm. not inconveniencing others and not hurting others in the process. So um, um, yeah. the things that we will tell them is like, you can stamp your feet uh, and then mm-hmm. you can jump 10 times to release that pent up energy. You can mm-hmm. find a stuffed animal that you can put it at the corner and you can like even punch it, you can throw pillows. <laughs> yeah, then yeah. After, yeah. When, when that emotion is out, then uh, they start to calm down. Then you can talk mm-hmm. logic and sense to them. Before th- before yeah. that, whatever you speak to them, they, it doesn't get in because they are just so full of that emotion. Yeah, it, mm-hmm. it happens to adults yep. sometimes also. But it's just like, yeah. how can we do it in an appropriate way without, like creating a scene in the restaurant, for example. Mm-hmm. Like you need right, your right. inner uh, tools to, to mm-hmm. process that and then or to like channel it away and then or return mm-hmm. to it and process it maybe five ten minutes later you go to the bathroom mm-hmm. take a deep breath and come out and then you know chill i can probably tell the person like how he made me feel but you know without creating mm-hmm. a scene uh that is probably i how i would approach it yeah oh uh, very cool very cool actually that's uh that's exactly the the method that i learned is the uh is learning how to let go of those negative emotions that get stored the biggest change that could happen when you're aware of your subconscious is uh your ability to redirect uh your, your direction in life like uh i think that's the, the that's really the biggest thing it's like knowing that your current habits lifestyle actions are not leading you towards where you want to go and then uh having that uh having having that knowledge of like of how your you yourself works um, in terms of subconscious and conscious uh, mind, and then applying that towards change, applying that towards uh, whatever change that you'd like to see, really, uh, whether it's financial relationships, um, that all that can be dealt with on a personal level with your subconscious mind, yeah, or how you how you change, uh, see things, you see yourself. Watch your thoughts mm-hmm. before they become your words. Watch your words because they become your actions. Watch your actions mm-hmm. because they become your habits. Watch your habits yeah. because they become your character. And watch your character for become your destiny. And mm-hmm. if we want to nice. change our destiny, we need to go back around to the root of it, which is to change your thoughts. And what are thoughts? Thoughts are mostly in our subconscious. We are usually not mm-hmm. aware of what we are thinking. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, uh, yeah, absolutely. I think that's the uh, uh, how, how powerful it can be. To, like mm-hmm. you mentioned, how do you change your trajectory of your life, which is your destiny? You need to go back yep, to exactly. how you think and how you act. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What's going on? What's going on in that mind? Do an audit of the mind mm-hmm. and um, see see what's swimming around in there. Question everything that's swimming around in there, and then uh, do our best to to act. You know, towards towards the direction that we want. Yep. Yep. Uh, Sounds good. Uh, thank you for joining us today on the uh, Spirit vs. Sign podcast. This is me, Guan Yu, and David Chong. David. Yeah, David Chong. Uh, we'll, we'll sign off this time. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Sounds good. Later, guys. Bye bye.